Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It feels weird to be filming again, but I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm kind of like bursting with energy. I just filmed like a makeup video where I answered your questions. Um, and I feel like my energy was all over the place. So I hope that you enjoyed these first few videos. So first art video of 2021, I thought we should start this off with a bang. So I want to do something that you guys have been asking me since before I started a YouTube channel. People used to ask me this, like people continuously ask me this since I basically started uh, making resin pieces um, and it is how to make a sphere. I used to get questions about making spheres like daily. It's okay, so I stopped making them because they are difficult to make, especially with the molds I was using at the time. I do have some new molds that I think are gonna make this a lot better, a lot easier, and look a lot more clear and sparkly and perfect. So I'm excited to get into this. So if you guys are interested to see how I would go about making a sphere piece, and continue watching. Okay, so obviously we're gonna be putting a flower in this sphere. Like, I thought about it and I was like, I don't have to do a flower, but I have to, I have to do a flower because what else, what else from me, right? I feel like you guys would be disappointed if I didn't do a flower. So I don't currently have any like dried full flowers right now, but what I do still have are these black roses that we used for a Halloween video. So I think I'm gonna use one of these. I'm gonna fluff it up, make it look really pretty because they are kind of cramped in this box. Um, so we are gonna use these. Again, these are from Bella Rose. This is what the logo looks like. I did get a lot of questions when I used these last time about where I got them. And the space that I work in right now is the design house for Apotheca Flowers, which is a flower shop. So they were able to get me these flowers and I don't know if you're able to get them without being like a, a flower business, I guess. They amazingly helped me get these, but I don't know if you could like Google. They do have a website, it's just www.bellarosa.com. So these are like pre-dried roses and they're also painted. And last time we used these, we actually discovered that they're like an orangey rose underneath the black paint. So yeah, they are real, they're pre-dried so I don't have to dry them myself and they are painted black. So we're gonna use those, and I wanted to show you the molds that I used to use. So I got these off of Amazon, and they are for resin, and they're actually a mess right now, so please don't don't judge them. Um, but they're these kinds of molds where it's like two halves of a sphere that you basically put together, and these are difficult because when you put it together, you obviously like would still get, if you left it like this, you would still get some resin leaking out of these edges cause it's not like super tight or anything. It's basically just sitting on there. Um, so I would have to like take these edges that like stick out and I would have to like tape it and tape it and tape it and tape it till I felt like nothing would come out. And then when you did pop these out, there would still be a line of resin that did kind of still leak a little bit around the very center where the like two seams kind of met. So then you'd have to sand that. And then the hole where you would pour the resin in or whatever is so tiny. <laughs> I'm not trying to like crap all over these molds. I did make a few, like quite a few sphere pieces with these molds. They're not horrible. Um, but they are kind of, they're not shiny on the inside. Like they, they kind of are. It's not like they're matte or anything, but they do have some scratches. They're definitely not perfect. Um, so I felt like whenever I made spheres with molds like this, they always came out like a little bit dull with some scratches around. I have to sand it. And then eventually I kind of felt like I had to learn how to polish them rather than top coat them because top coating a full sphere like this, I don't think you can do it, right? Cause I tried like taping the very bottom edge or like, I don't know, I tried so many different things. I tried making this like little you know, triangle piece that I put on the bottom and it, it just ended up like resonating to the whole thing and it was not great. So I think when you make like full spheres like this, you definitely have to polish it to get it to be shiny. And polishing is something I still cannot, I don't know, I don't know how to do it. So I'm definitely going to have to revisit polishing things because I still, I still haven't completely grasped it. I feel like I've gotten close before, um, but never perfect. So 
the molds we are gonna use. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. So they're basically full spheres. They're not going to be the full, full thing like this. So they are gonna have like a flat edge right here, but it, the whole thing, it's basically a full sphere, but you're gonna have a nice flat edge where you can set the sphere down because when you make a thing like this, like a full one, you kind of have to make a stand for it as well, which is totally fine if that's what you wanna do. But I really like these because they have that flat edge right on the bottom. It's still a nice full sphere. It's just got a little bit of a flat edge where you can set the whole sphere down. Look how glorious this mold is. Oh my, when I got this. And they sent this to me as like an extra thing because I had bought some other molds that I'm also very excited to play with uh, for a different project, but then they also sent me a couple of sphere molds. And these are from AAJ Molds. We have used their molds before. So they're actually the silicone mold artists that made the moon ring holders that we used in a previous video. So we're definitely going to use the big one here. Oh my God, I, I cannot wait to pop this out already and I haven't even started. So the resin I'm gonna be using is the Counterculture DIY casting resin. It is a softer curing resin, but it's perfect for deep pores like this. Also, I wanna point out that since this is going to be the bottom here, we basically have to picture the whole piece to be like this. So when I put the flower in, the bottom is going to be the top, which means I'll have to take the flower and put it face down. So that way when we pop it out, the nice round part will be on top and the flat part will be on the bottom. And maybe we're gonna sprinkle some glitter in there. I mean, these are black roses, so they're cool on their own, but I feel like maybe some, maybe some like pink glitter, or like holographic glitter or something. Anyway, glitter might make an appearance, but is anybody surprised? Probably not, given who you're talking to, you know? So anyway, <laughs> we're gonna get started now. We're gonna go over to my desk. I am gonna do this in layers. Looking at it here, I think I'm gonna have to do it in like four layers. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna mix up some casting resin, pour our first layer, and we'll go from there. Hello, did I spook you? Um, we've got voiceover artsy madwoman here and uh, I haven't done a voiceover in forever but I wanted to pop in and explain how I did this. So I did let my cup of resin sit for a little bit so that the bubbles would kind of rise to the top and then you just saw me use my heat gun to kind of pop those bubbles and that really cuts down on the bubbles that makes it into the piece. Um, also for glitter, try to sprinkle uh, even less than I did. But when you do large pieces like this, definitely do small sprinklings of glitter in each layer. That way it looks nice and like spread out throughout the piece, but it's not too much glitter. So I've just poured my first layer in and I am gonna let each layer cure around 24 hours, just because it's winter right now and resin, especially casting resin, takes forever to cure. So I did let it cure overnight. All right, day two, layer two. So. I have my resin mixed up already. There's already glitter in it and everything. So we're gonna get started and pour some resin into the mold. So this is the layer that's getting the flower put in as well. So what I'm doing is pouring a layer of resin first. That way the flower kind of has, it's not going into something dry, you know? So there's gonna be resin in there already. And then I'm taking the flower and basically flooding it. So I'm pouring it into all the small crevices and trying to really get it in there so that there's no like air pockets when we put the rose in. So to flood the rose, I am just kind of taking my resin and dribbling it around and trying to get it in between as many petals as I can and especially in the very center because I feel like with roses, that's where the air pocket really happens is right in the center and I think I still got one in the end. Um, but it wasn't as big as it would have been if I hadn't flooded the rose. So now I'm kind of just like squeezing it so that the resin can kind of work its way down and get into all the spaces in this rose. And then what I'm gonna also do is take my heat gun and just, just very lightly, not a lot, but I'm gonna take my heat gun and kind of like pop some bubbles that might be at the very top when I pour resin onto the rose. And then this part is just, it stresses me out every time, 
um, but I do have to flip the rose over and put it in the mold. So I know I said we were only going to be doing the larger mold, but when I mixed up resin for this, I kept having extra resin, so I decided to do the smaller sphere as well. And I'm also going to be doing a black rose in this one as well, um, but I am going to keep this one completely clear, whereas the bigger one I did end up doing a base, you'll see. Um, but I am just doing the same process. I flooded the rose, put a little bit in the mold before I put the rose in and then flip it over and put uh, the rose into the mold where there's already a little bit of resin. So this is the second layer and the reason that I put the rose in the second layer is because I don't want the rose to be pressed up against the very top of the piece when I pop it out. So now I'm just popping some bubbles with my heat gun. You have to do this very carefully. So now we're on to day three and this is going to be the third layer and this layer is just gonna be clear resin with a little bit of glitter sprinkled in because again, I like to sprinkle it in each layer to make it look like it's spread throughout the entire sphere. When you're doing spheres and you're popping bubbles with your heat gun, make sure you're being careful with this because it's obviously a very tight space in there, especially with that small sphere. So make sure you're not doing too much heat and it's not going to like overheat or melt the mold or make the um, resin get too hot. And now we're on to the fourth layer on the fourth day. Uh, the, again, this is just going to be another clear layer of resin with a little bit of glitter sprinkled in. Sprinkled in. <laughs> everybody welcome to day five this is the fifth layer this is the last layer so for the smaller sphere I did end up making this completely clear which was Sean's suggestion um, so I did just leave that clear with a little bit of glitter and then for the bigger one I'm using this um, dispersion color to color the resin black and then so that the base is gonna be like a black base and then the like black flower is gonna look like it's coming you know like growing out of the black base that was my thought process anyway so the bigger one has the black base the smaller one is clear <laughs> It is time to pop these spheres out. The reason I'm out of breath is because um, these are these are a struggle <laughs> to loosen and to pop out. As you can see, I haven't fully popped them out yet. I obviously wanted to do that with you guys. I feel like I struggled forever to loosen these and pop them out. And then uh, I looked at their Instagram and they do have a video showing you like the best way to pop these out which is to, I mean, basically I do have it mostly popped out now, but you like fold the edges in like this down and in, and you basically like roll it inward so that the sphere will pop out. Again, if you have these molds and you're struggling with popping these out, they do have a video on their Instagram of them showing you how to pop them out. So it's still a struggle, but it was a, a like 10,000 times easier. Uh, once I watch their video. So now I think we're gonna do the small one first and leave the big one For last as like a finale. I also wanted to pop them out with you because I just feel like this is gonna be a moment All right, so this edge here. I'm gonna oh my goodness. I'm gonna fold it down Make sure this doesn't pop out and roll across the floor Okay, so this is what it's looking like for the small one now, if you guys will remember the scene where I was putting this in, this flower, this flower basically took up this entire mold. So I think what's happening and why you can't see much going on is because it's obviously a black rose. And since it's taking up the entire mold, you kind of can't see anything because it's like wall to wall black rose, but it is glittery, it is shiny, and the actual rose, like the real rose, is orange and whenever I put these roses in resin the black paint kind of comes off and you can see the orange underneath it which I really I love it 
I love it. So in these bright lights, it is hard for me to show you guys what this looks like, but the mold itself, oh my God, look how like perfect, literally perfect, round, shiny. I love it. So I am gonna get some close-up shots later of these spheres so that you can see them a little bit better, especially this one. I think this bigger one is gonna be okay. We'll probably be able to see more of it, I'm hoping, and crossing my fingers. <laughs> but this is honestly really cool. It kind of reminds me of like a snow globe. Okay, so we're gonna do, oh my goodness, I can't even pick it up. So we're gonna do the big one now. I'm gonna do the same method of kind of digging my fingers in the sides of the top of the mold and kind of rolling them down and inward. Let go! It's like suctioned in there. Can you see how the mold is like? <laughs> Let go! Give birth. <laughs> ah! Okay, 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 okay. Oh my goodness, whoa! That was almost a disaster. So here is the bigger one with another black rose in it. I did a base that also was black and I left a bit of the stem as well so that it kind of looked like, you know, the flower was growing out of the black base. So this is what this one is looking like. I love looking at it this way. You can definitely tell that there's a flower in there when you look at it this way, but again, looking at it from the top, it does do a lot of the same thing that the smaller one does where it's a black rose, so it's kind of hard to see, especially with all these lights just kind of like bouncing off of how shiny the mold is. It's hard to see what's going on in there, so I'm definitely going to show you guys some close-up shots. In fact, here are some close-up shots of these two sphere pieces so that once we continue talking about them, you will know what I'm saying. So, I mean, needless to say, I love these. I think that they're so cool. They're actually like really nice to hold. Um, I love these molds. They make them super shiny, as I've said 10,000 times. I will admit I put too much glitter, just like a smidge too much, especially when you look at this big one from the top. There's definitely a lot of glitter when you look down and it does distract from the rose itself. I think you know, you're gonna have it displayed like this on a table. And looking at it this way, it is really pretty. It's honestly like a snow globe. It's just like almost a snow globe frozen in time with like glitter just kind of sprinkled about. I think I'm definitely going to do this again with like a bright rose, maybe like a bright red rose or something like that because I mean, the, this is amazing, but since it's such a dark color, it's hard to see. But all in all, I love it. I love it. As a breakdown for both of these spheres, as far as how much resin I put into them, for the larger sphere, each layer was around one and a half cups. There were 
Actually, the second layer and the fourth layer, I wrote three fourths of a cup. And then the very last layer was not much at all. Like I, I feel like that was probably a fourth of the cup on that very last layer. So I think the last layer was not that much. So to fill this larger sphere, I think I used around three cups, like a, like a little less than three cups. And then for the smaller sphere, I think I used around a cup of resin to fill this one. And there were five layers for both of the spheres. And the reason I did it in so many layers, especially for this larger one, if you were to fill this with resin and not do it in layers, it would overheat, probably burn and stick to the mold and probably burn the flower, but it probably would have ruined the mold and the resin itself would be all bubbly and gross. Because when you pour resin in this much, like this big of an amount all at once, it gets way too hot. So you have to do pieces like this, like 3D pieces like this in layers. And even if you didn't use like this exact mold, as long as you have like a little bit of a flat base, you can take tape and put it right on the bottom edge of this and top coat it if you want. Like it's just so much easier to work with spheres that are like this that have just a little bit of like a flat edge on the bottom. But when you do like a full sphere, I just, I couldn't figure out a way to fully top coat it without having one little spot on the bottom that wasn't covered in resin. I suppose that is the bottom, and if you were to have a sphere, you'd have to have a stand for it as well, so that spot would just kind of sit in the stand and you wouldn't see it anyway. But I don't know, there was just, I, I don't like not completing something fully, so I, I really like these where it's got a nice flat bottom. But if you have figured out how to polish resin, unlike me, <laughs> um, then you can totally do a full sphere kind of like this one and then just polish it if you really want it to be completely shiny. I just haven't figured it out yet. I'm still working on it. I'm gonna figure it out. And the second I do, you guys are gonna be the first to hear about it. I, I pinky promise you. So what do you think of our spheres? Let me know what you think in the comments. I wanna hear your thoughts. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and follow me on Instagram. It is at artsymadwoman. I love you guys. Absolute And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. It's gold. It's gold in here. Let's actually do that. Actually, actually, actually. <laughs>